For the first time since the introduction of Camera Raw, Adobe have been obliged to add the concept of process versions to the Camera Raw processing. This has happened now because Camera Raw 6 has seen a complete revision of the capture sharpening and noise reduction, which affects the total appearance of the image rather than just one particular aspect of the raw processing. Because of this, there are now two process versions that you can choose from when editing your photos, and this applies not just to RAW files, but also to TIFF and JPEG images too. And in the example you can see here, the layer that's currently visible shows you the Camera Raw 5 processing. Uh, that was the version of Camera Raw that was shipped with Photoshop CS4. And if I switch on the vis visibility of the layer above it, you can see the difference between processing the same image using the same settings in Camera Raw 6, but using the new process version 2010. And there is a copy of this image on the DVD if you want to make comparisons uh, yourself. The difference is really quite subtle. So if I go in a little bit closer to a 100% view and then switch off the layer visibility, you can see there there was a much sort of uh, a much sort of bigger difference that you can see at a 100% view. And essentially what's happened here is that one of the camera raw engineers, Eric Chan, who was put in charge of coming up with the new D-Mosaic processing, uh, he determined there were different aspects to the, um, to, to the noise that you see when you carry out a D-Mosaic process from the raw data. And this is made up of different types of noise, the color noise, the blotchiness that you sometimes see, and then pattern noise. And both of these uh, types of noise that are very noticeable to the eye that we generally consider to be, un, uh, to be un, unwanted. On the other hand, there is a fine uh, grain-like noise, um, which photographers generally do find quite appealing. And so part of the process in coming up with new process version 2010 was to filter out the noise that we don't like and retain the noise that we do. And this is where he's come up with the final D-Mosaic processing, which as you can see produces um, a really nice improved uh, result compared to what you could achieve using Camera Raw 5 in Photoshop CS4. So let's just have a look at this in practice on a actual raw image. So if I open up this photograph here, you can see at the moment that this is a version 2003 image and you can tell because of this exclamation mark that's in the bottom right corner of the preview. And if we click on it, this allows us to uh, upgrade the image to process version 2010 and compare the difference. And before I do that, if I just take the image to a 100% view and just scroll down slightly, if I click on the button, just watch what happens to the preview here, you can see there's the difference that's been applied through upgrading the image from the legacy 2003 process version to process version 2010. Now then, if you want to go back to the previous version, you can do so by clicking on the camera calibration panel over here. And you can see that there's a menu at the top where you can choose to go back to the previous version if you wanted to. And next what I'm going to do is now go over to the detail panel and then just show you the aspects of the sharpening that have now changed with using the new process version 2010, starting with a look at the radius. So if I hold down the Option key on a Mac or the Alt key on a PC and just click on the radius slider, which is set to a 0.8 radius, you can see using process version 2003, this is the type of radius that was generated using the legacy setting. And if I click on the button at the bottom and do the same thing, hold down the Option key on a Mac and the Alt key on a PC, you can see a difference there in the way that the radius sharpening is being previewed in, in isolation. And I suggest if you're watching this movie that you might want to just go back and just check out the previous view and then skip forward again just to quickly compare the difference between those two versions. And if I now do the same thing with the detail slider, because you can also see a difference there, if I go back to process version 2003, then go to the detail panel and then option click or alt click on the detail slider, that's the detail setting of 50% applied using process version 2003. And then if I click on the button and then option click, alt click again, you can see there's the detail slider setting. So there is really sort of quite a difference. What those differences are, I bet I've explained better in the book itself if you check out the chapter four content. And there is also another movie on the DVD that also goes into more detail with the sharpening controls, how to apply them to an image, and also the impact of using the new process version 2010 and enabling you to access more controls down here in the noise reduction. 
So let me cancel out of that because the other thing I need to show you is the implications of using the new process version 2010 on images that have um, had extreme recovery or fill light adjustments applied to them. So we're looking here at a version that's uh, using process version 2003. You can see at the bottom the exclamation mark. And basically in the basic panel you can see that the recovery here has been set to plus 80 in order to try and retain some of the highlight detail in the snow. And without explaining anything more right now, let me just click on the button down here so that you can see the after version. You can see quite a little change that has taken place in the image. Let me just go and do a, an undo there so you can see the before and then click on the button again and you can see the change that's taken place. And I think that you might agree that the benefit of using process version 2010 is that the recovery uh, setting that's been applied to this image is now working a lot better with the process version 2010. But um, the thing to bear in mind here is that even with other images where the settings aren't quite so extreme, you will see changes taking place. On the whole, I think they're going to be changes for the better. But if you decide to end up batch processing a whole lot of images to take them from 2003 and upgrade them all to 2010, while the results will be improved, I think, on the whole, you will sometimes see some slight shifts in appearance. And if I cancel out of there, let me just show you an example of the fill light adjustment, which has also been improved. One of the problems of working with fill light in the past has been that it's also created this tone inversion effect or solarization when applying two extreme settings. And to show you what I mean, this image is in process version 2003. If I drag the slider up, you can see as soon as I take it up to 35 and go beyond, you can see the solarization that's taken place here in the shadows. And this has been a known problem with um, the fill light adjustment in Camera Raw for some time. It was always a case of just be very careful of what you're doing and not overdo the settings. But watch what happens when I click on the button down here to upgrade to process version 2010. That solarization is pretty much all gone. In fact, if I was to take the fill light up even higher, although I would say at this setting it's getting a little bit unnatural and I wouldn't consider that to be a very good adjustment to make to an image, it's managed to overcome still the main problem of the solarization that was associated with these types of images. So again, um, a real benefit of working with process version 2010, but at the same time, just be aware that upgrading will have an effect on the recovery, as I just mentioned, and also with the fill light. So I'll just cancel out of there. Um, more information about this is available in chapter four of the book. But on the whole, I think you'll find that the new process version 2010 that's available in Camera Raw 6 is a substantial improvement in what you can achieve using Camera Raw.